and I, I share this with my family, with my children, with my wife all the time, is we better be prepped up. So then what does happen, it's not about what happens to us, it's about our response to the circumstances that are happening to us. So I, I'll give you a, another great story about the AFC Championship game. So the night before the game, I gave a speech, okay? So our team was like the most non-rah-rah football team in history. Tony Dungy would put you to sleep in his pregame speech, okay? Literally, y'all see him on TV? That's him. Hey man, yeah, you're in deep job. I'd be like, Coach, can you motivate us? He's like, Saturday, if, if, if I got to motivate you, we've already lost. I'm like, what kind of coach talks like that? I, I mean, I need like some Lombardi stuff. He's like, I, that died in the 60s Saturday. That died with cigarettes in the locker room. You know? <laughs> so I give this speech. So I ask him, I say, hey, Coach Dungeon, you mind if I give a speech? He's like, sure. So I steal Herb Book Brooks' speech. Yeah, you guys, Miracle on Ice for those, the 1980 U.S. hockey team. I totally steal it, totally rip it off. Don't know anything about hockey, not even a little bit. Probably never went to a hockey game, but I thought the speech was absolutely incredible. And it's our time. It's all these different things, right? So I get up and, and I address the guys. I'm nervous. Like I've prayed about this all week. I've talked to my wife, my pastor. I'm scared because no one ever does this on our team. I just feel like, hey, I feel led to do this. I'm going to do it. So I get up and I give this speech. And when I'm done, the teammates, I mean, they come out of their sh chairs. They are fired. Dudes are chest bumping, butt slapping, smacking heads, you know. And it's, it's Saturday night. We got like 12 hours before we play. All right. But I mean, we are fired up. And I get back to my room. I'm like, baby, I blew the, I blew the doors off. I mean, this was the speech of all speeches. We are going to destroy the New England Patriots tomorrow. I'm telling you, I, I've never seen our team this united, this fired up. She's like, that's great, baby. Good to hear. Y'all remember the score in the first quarter? 21-3. Let me help you. And I, I remember Peyton throws a pick six to Samuel who's running back and I'm trying to run after and I just give up. I'm like, ain't no way I'm catching this dude, right? And I watch him run in the end zone and I thought, boy, I screwed that speech up. It ain't our time, obviously. You know, and so I'm walking to the sideline and Tony Dungy grabs me and he looks at me and he said, do you still believe it's our time? I'm going to be truthful. I was like, no, nah, not really. I didn't say it, though. I mean, inside, that's what I'm saying. Because you'd say it, too. Like, everybody's like, oh, I never, uh, yeah, I told I was like, ah, yeah, it's not our time, Tony. I appreciate it. Like, now you want to motivate? Too late, right? So, but then he starts looking at every player on our side. And he's like, man, we'll get the ball back. If we go down and kick a field goal before halftime, it's going to be 21-6. We're going to win this football game. Do you believe it's our time? And I was like, again, yeah, I'm dragging on the field going, man, ain't no way it's our time. This team's going to beat the brakes off of us, okay? This is a good team, and they're playing good, and we're not. But we drive it down, and we kick a field goal. And so we're jogging in, and as Tony's jogging in, he's looking at all of us. Men, you believe it's our time. And again, I told you, we're a non-rah-rah football team now. We go in the locker room, and he walks to each guy around and usually the coaches go into a room and the players go into a room we talk for like 20 seconds i was the breakdown guy which means when the team came up i called us up gave us some kind of speech and then ran back out we just all talked amongst each other and, and tony went to each guy and looked at me and said, men do you believe it's our time you got to believe it's still our time i'm telling you if we survive the storm if we batten the hatches down and together we unite they won't know how to deal with us. And when the storm comes back on them, we will break them. Do you still believe it's our time? And then he basically became prophetic. I mean, he literally laid the game out almost exactly like I was going to break down. We're going to get the ball, go score a touchdown. They're going to kick a field goal. We're going to go do this. We're going to do that. And I literally remember watching this game play out and him talking to us every time we came to the sideline. Men, just survive the storm. All you got to do is hold on. Because if you survive, you're going to thrive at the end. And as we came down and we scored that last touchdown, and Joseph Adal walks in, and you remember the next one, Brady throws the interception. And it's on our rings, right? Our time. And the crazy thing is, I scored a touchdown, Joe Brady, I scored a touchdown in the game. And Sports Illustrated had a two-page spread with me in the end zone holding the ball with our time in quotations over the top of it. And I tell my kids, I tell my players all the time, I, I didn't believe right away, I'm not going to lie, but the encouragement he gave me just to survive, man, keep 
putting it together, keep taking a step each and every way. And when the storm comes, when you come out of the storm, the sunlight on the other side, we're going to shine in it. And we did it. And it's the same thing that I looked at with, with, with the sign, the recovery sign, right? We went through some dark and ugly times. But as a country, and it sounds like as a community even more, you're on the other side of that and you are thriving. You're adding to savings, you're adding to community, you're bringing people into a community. Companies are expanding and growing and doing those things because you survived the storm. But you only, you only survived it together. It takes everybody in the room, it takes everybody in the family, everybody in the company, everybody in the organization, everybody in the group, team, you name it, everybody's gotta be together to survive it. But once you do, how beautiful is it on the other side? When you watch those parks being expanded, when you watch buildings be done, you see doctor's offices look the way they do, you see people moving into the community, how much pride do you have that we survived and we're growing? Be proud, right? Be proud that that's where things go and the way and the direction things are moving. 